गुड मॉर्निंग सर एम आई ऑडिबल शुभम आई जस्ट ऑन दीडियो इन नेक्स्ट फ्यू मिनट सेटिंग so actually so good morning and namaste on behalf of nidm i shubham badola young professional in center for hill area disaster risk reduction welcomes you all to today's webinar on this beautiful day for on the topic of understanding the landslide disaster risk reduction and resilience before we start our webinar i would like to express my profound gratitude to sri rajendra ratnu ias ed nidm and professor surya prakash head gmr division nidm ministry of home affairs government of india for giving me this opportunity of organizing the webinar due to other engagements of professor surya prakash on his behalf i would like to welcome all the participants and panelists for today's webinar but there is a important announcement for participants you are requested to kindly ask your doubts and queries in the chat section which will be taken at end of the talk so now let's begin with a quick explanation to topic of today's webinar landslide disaster risk reduction and resilience refer to a major and strategies aiming at minimizing the impact of landslide on human lives infrastructure and the environment as well as enhancing the ability to recover and adapt after such events it involves a combination of prevention actions preparedness measures and post disaster recovery effort some key aspects of landslide disaster risk reduction and resilience are risk assessment and mapping early warning system systems public awareness and education and many more with increasing use and reliability to technology early warning systems play a crucial role in mitigating the impact of landslides by providing timely information and alert to at risk communities these systems help in detecting and monitoring factors that can trigger landslide allowing authorities to issue warning and initiate evacuation process timely so now i would like to introduce our speaker of first session uh, which will be taken jointly by dr uh, uday and dr varun from iit mandi Dr Uday is currently associate professor at IIT Mandi who has completed his PhD from IIT Bombay and has 15 plus year of experience with 2 years in industry 3 years in research and 10 plus years in academics he is one of the pioneer faculty in civil engineering department at IIT Mandi his research areas include landslide disaster risk reduction nature nature based mitigation solutions biogeotechnical and machine learning in geotechnics He is author of 60 plus research articles, two granted and four filed patents, and received research grant worth 4.2 crores. He is also founding director and part-time CEO of startup Intuit Service Private Limited, incubated at IIT Mandi Catalyst, which supplies the developed landslide monitoring technology on commercial sales. Now about Professor Dutt, works as an associate professor in School of computing and electrical engineering at indian institute of technology mandi he has applied his knowledge and skills in the field of psychology public policy and computer science to explore how humans make decision on social managerial and environmental issues he serves as a senior member of ieee and as principal investigator at applied cognitive science lab he has co-authored many more than 200 papers in top journals and conferences He is currently serving as an associate editor of Frontiers in Cognitive Science Journal, a review editor for of Frontiers in Decision Neuroscience Journal, and a member of editorial board of International Journal on Cyber Situational Awareness. He was also a lead author on Chapter Two of IPCC's Fifth Assessment Report. He has also contributed via low-cost IoT technology and machine method learning methods to landslide disaster in Indian subcontinent. With this, I would 
welcome Dr. Uday and Dr. Varun to enlighten us with your knowledge. Please, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shubham, for giving us uh, for giving a good introduction to us, and thanks again uh, for inviting us for this particular presentation. I think uh, you'll be able to see us now on the video, and our audio is proper. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, now I have also shared this shared the presentation. Please confirm if you are able to see in presentation mode. Yes, sir. It is now in presentation mode. Perfect. Okay. So, can we start? Yes, sir. You can start. Okay. Perfect. So, I hope there are no issues with the screen. You are able to see see the whole presentation screen. Yes, sir. We are able to. See. Okay. Perfect. We have some tabs coming on on the on the top, so I thought it should not be uh, putting any problem in the presentation. Okay. So, uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, I hope uh, people have, uh, people have joined here from different parts of India. But however, I'm I'm hundred percent sure that temperature or climate is more or less uh, better uh, from last two days because of this western monsoon zone. I hope this is the condition across across the subcontinent as I can understand. So on a, on such a good day, it's good to talk about the next or the or the hazard which we have mostly in the mountain sites, which we call it as landslides. I'm sure all of you are very well aware of these landslides, and that's why you are here. So uh, to say, though I and Dr. Varun, uh, so you can see the most important thing you should appreciate is I am from civil engineering background, whereas Dr. Varun is from computer science background. He's sitting with me, so you can understand, you know, when two of us are coming together, we are trying to solve uh, a major problem, which is, which is relevant to society, which happens to be the uh, base or which happens to be one of the major mission of IIT Mandi, uh, which is situated in uh, Himalayan region. So we'll be talking in this presentation of uh, uh, landslide risk management. Uh, we are going to show probably a slightly different a context of talking about different types of assessment, perception, and finally we are going to talk about how to handle or how to make decisions based on the system at the individual level as well as on the uh, on a big, on a higher level or we can say at, as a, at a community level at least. So with this, uh, to quickly introduce you, uh, hope the slides are moving. Just can you confirm, Shubham, if the slide is moving? I'm in, the, I'm in second slide. Okay. I hope everything is fine. So now I'm just trying to show you our uh, presence in uh, mid Himalayan mid region. So we have uh, two campuses currently, which is which we call it as North Campus and South Campus, and we are uh, very well situated, as you can see in the topmost figure. Uh, we are well within the the mountainous region uh, at the mid Himalayan region in uh, Mandi, uh, around 14, uh, 14 kilometers away from the Mandi town. And uh, it, fall, it falls into very scenic picturesque valley. As you can see here, we are uh, surrounded by uh, the mountain peaks, uh, which are snow fed. And also we have a gorgeous river, which is flowing just at the side of the campus. Or we can say one of the boundaries of the campus is the, is the river itself, uh, which is Uhul River. So uh, when we are talking about such picturesque location today, uh, as we discuss about landslides, so it's not a very uh, far away thing for us. As I told you, you need to travel 14 kilometers to reach to our campus before coming to uh, our campus from Mandi district. So in between, you're going to encounter a lot of these particular places, what uh, you are seeing currently here. So in most of the situations, you will see, uh, you'll see a lot of conditions of say a small uh, rubble floor, you, you can see boulders, including soil, which is falling here. If you see here, less of boulders, but more of soil, uh, which is falling here. And you can see very pointed that, yes, there is a retaining wall, but still it doesn't control or it is not infant bound. So you expect to have uh, some failures which are seen here. And something interesting here, as you can see, is uh, composed of more rock. There is no much soil, as you can see very clearly in this. Also, also in this particular figure, you can see. Uh, planar joints, so I will say textbook type of uh, planar failures uh, you are seeing in this particular photographs, which I'm trying to show. And apart from this, something of interest is these two slides, which I'm trying to show you, uh, which I circled just now. Okay, so here you can see the thickness of this particular slide, you know, if you, if you want to get a good guess, is not more than half to one meter. Okay, so the thickness is not more than one meter in this particular in this particular slides, which I'm trying to show. So it's typically surface flow, but the only thing which is of more concern is the extent, which you are seeing in this particular slides. Both the slides you can see, you know, the extent is very high, but the thickness is very very low. 
Okay, so we are talking about different types of failures, different types of conditions, different type of soil, different types of mountain terrain. Okay, highly vegetated, thickly vegetated. Still, you can see uh, some some part of failures which are coming on the on the slides. Okay, so uh, when you are going across this particular location, there are two ways of looking at it. One is you are worried or you are you are disturbed. The two is we are seeing as being a civil engineer or a computer science engineer who wants to work into disaster management. We see it as a major opportunity. So this has led us uh, to start a major work. Sorry, uh, are you able to see the slides still? There is some small disconnect. I can see. Doctor Uday, no, uh, we can't see your screen now. Okay, just a second. There was some disconnect, as I can understand. Yeah, am I back on? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you the insight in the into the valley. Is the slide you are seeing? Yeah, uh, we are seeing the slide in which you draw and explain as the extent of those landslides. Right. Okay. Perfect. So, okay, I'm now going to the introduction part of it. Okay. So, uh, this particular area, this particular landslide, which is uh, Cotropy landslide, they call it. It is well, very well documented by NIDM. Uh, they have a wonderful uh, case study which has been published by uh, Professor Surprakash and his group. I'm sure it's a worth, uh, it's worth a read uh, if you want to really look into this because this has this has been a major disaster in this particular area, and it took almost 46 people's life because two buses have been uh, washed away by the debris from this particular site, which happened at a very uh, wrong time at at around one o'clock in the night. So people could not see a major mass movement which is happening in the ground and uh, that has created a major uh, issue with the uh, major disaster in this particular area and you can see very uh, on, on a very different context uh, i should say very lucky or uh, maybe the terrain itself is so good that there is a huge population in this particular area which just got saved from the from getting washed away from this particular debris so when we talk about all these particular issues then the major issue which we talk is about risk so how much risk is the slide or that particular landslide is prone to and how uh, how you can be averting this particular risk that is the major uh, major point of issue what we are going to talk as a part of this particular webinar so when we talk about risk mitigation how to stop then we have two options one is structural measure and a non structural measure so if i would have been a typical civil engineer i would have been more concerned about structural measure because you know i can i will talk about around 72 types of measures structural measures what we have retaining wall gabion wall you know the reinforcement the soil nailing soil anchoring mesh net etc all these particular conditions which can come into redu reducing the hazard so we call it a structural measure whereas when you are not exactly going into the to, to cure the hazard but we are taking taking care of the consequences or the vulnerability associated associated with this then we call it as a non-structural measure. So this is the non-structural non measure is now pulling up very importance uh, because it's understood we cannot uh, tackle with nature or we cannot uh, take it, uh, we cannot go against the nature. So in this particular slide, which I just showed you, uh, which was around like 200 mm -hmm. meters, uh, which is around 200 meters, the, the, the width or the, the height of this particular is more than 240 meters. Uh, typically it's like 80 floor mm -hmm. building, 80 story building. If you have ever seen, so that's the extent of this particular uh, landslide which has happened. So if you're talking about any structural measure, if you can take care of this, I'm sure we need to spend something in the percentage of GDP to clear such type of uh, major major event. So that is why we have to talk about more non-structural measures in order to save people's life. So uh, as, as a part of this particular study, we had two options of going into a regional scale and a local scale uh, monitoring, where in the regional scale, we developed some rainfall thresholds, data driven models which I'll be covering as a part of the presentation. Followed by this, uh, I, I, we, we deferred or we are not exactly talking about a field scale monitoring as this, whereas we are concentrating more on the simulation and perception part of it. So we are talking about more about how uh, these models and uh, this perception which we are developing as a part of the study, uh, so non-structural, how is it being perceived by uh, people or the local community and how that can be improved with respect to a lot of studies. So that is what we have focused as a part of this particular presentation. So, sorry, um, yeah. So we have uh, again used the concept of machine learning, which is coming up, uh, which is of course uh, I'm sure all of us are very well, very well 
uh, known or we, we know very well about the machine learning and how is it used for tackling a lot of uh, interesting problems, including the disasters. So what we try to do is, as I told you, uh, you need to travel around 14 kilometers from uh, when you're traveling from uh, the district uh, the, from the town of Mandi to IIT Mandi. I, I showed you some of the landsat, but these landsats are almost to the extent of 82 slides in this particular location. So what we did is uh, we tried to collect all the soil samples in this particular area and we tried to characterize them with respect to the standard geotechnical engineering parameters, including uh, we did a bit of lithology and, uh, uh, and geology related to this. Uh, we got this all information uh, done and then we tried to see how these particular parameters are they talking themselves saying that you know this is a landslide prone area or this is not uh, this is uh, this is what is triggering or this is what is mentioning that said there is a chance of landslide only looking at these particular parameters which we do on a regular basis in uh, geotechnical engineering laboratory at IIT Mandi. Uh, we out of these 82 locations there are 15 locations where the landslide has happened and uh, the, the remaining 23 locations the landslide did not happen so we, we were getting a good uh, understanding on where the landslide has happened, where the landslide has not happened. So what we did is we tried to understand, we said the landslide happening is one and landslide not happening is zero. And we tried to see how these parameters are suiting themselves to come into this one and zero domain. So there, what we tried, we tried, we had different, uh, different factors. We just split them. We have uh, taken into ranking them by using this concept of uh, uh, feature selection method. And then we have given the ranking for these influence factors and then we try to see which of this uh, model is giving us a very good understanding on uh, indication of ranking and, and accordingly when we got the ranking then we immediately uh, got back to machine learning. We split the data into 40, uh, 70 and 30 and then uh, we used various ensemble non-ensemble techniques and we tried to understand what are the contributing factors of the whole uh, set which I just showed you in the last slide. How many of these factors are contributing uh, to understand the susceptibility of a landslide. So looking at this, yes, you can see uh, different parameters which I just showed you in the last slide. They are now on the y-axis and we are seeing the correlation coefficient, uh, Pearson correlation coefficient on the x-axis. Then we try to see or we try to rank it based on these particular parameters where we saw that there are six parameters, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, which are contributing to the uh, identifying the landslides. As I, told, as I just told you, zero and one. And the combination of this, uh, I probably I'll just go here. So you can see the combination of this is giving us a very good uh, accuracy uh, when you talk about AUROC area under the receiver, of receiver operating curve. So we are trying to see we are having a very good uh, chance of around 95.8 percentage uh, good uh, prediction of landsets only based on six parameters: radio compaction, slope angle, porosity, in situ moisture content, saturated permeability, and angle of internal friction. So based on this, we tried to, uh, again, we, we, we went back out to this particular area. We saw where all these particular values which you have uh, denoted, which are falling into this particular domain. And we tried to develop a susceptibility map, uh, which looks like which looks like this. So this is the points. You can see the points where the landslide uh, has happened in this particular area. And this is typically a road which is going, uh, which is connecting the Mandi to IIT Mandi campus. Okay, so this is a 14 kilometer road. So we try to just zonate this particular area as corresponding to the highest amount of uh, accuracy what we obtained from six parameters by using different machine learning models. Okay, and then we developed a susceptibility map. So this is one of the susceptibility maps, I will say, being done for the first time by using only geotechnical engineering parameters. Further, of course, we have worked, uh, we have now come, or we are currently working on uh, rainfall indices as well as the geotechnical uh, geo geological terrains the geomorphology and uh, the geological aspects we are trying to include and try to see earlier as i told this is only 96 percent uh, accurate map so we are trying to make it as uh, better as possible up to 99 at least we are trying to bring these particular numbers by including various parameters so when we are talking about this particular thing we are talking about a very small uh, area or a very small site specific uh, areas where we are trying to zone it however it's not simple uh, I am not only worried about only 14 kilometers, probably I am worried about a bigger area. I want to see how, uh, what is the susceptibility of the whole region of Mandi district, Kulu district, Kinnor has been falling into wrath on a lot of this. So for this, we have referred into literature, we understood most of the landslides which are happening here are along the road sites. So that's why we have collected most of the information from uh, existing literature. And uh, we understood how this has been taken uh, by using field study. So we just try to plot it, plot the same by using now uh, the INSAR analysis. I'm sure all of you should be knowing about INSAR, uh, the satellite aperture uh, radar. Uh, so we try to use the concept of uh, uh, 
the deformation measurements by using satellite and uh, from INSA and accordingly we see what is the deformation. So in this, if you can see there is a small uh, plus mark marked here. So this is the reference point which we have fixed and according to this we see that all this particular area is uh, increasing. Uh, yeah, it is increasing whereas this particular area is decreasing. So which means that this is more landslide prone than the other blue part what you are seeing in this particular location. So this work has been done for Kinor and for we did for our own area of uh, IIT Mandi. So very clear our campus is falling somewhere here and all this particular field which is aside is, is showing us a higher uh, probability or higher scope of you know increment which is which can cause a landslide over over time. So that's what we understood. We also did it quickly for a small area of Shimla as well as Solon. So, uh, so by doing this we are trying to understand uh, a regional susceptibility map and accordingly can we also talk about including this part into uh, risk analysis. So once we once we know the susceptibility area as all of you maybe a few of you can understand this that when we have vulnerability index coming in we can multiply the vulnerability with susceptibility and we can find out what is the risk associated with this. So this is the regional scale uh, risk assessment what we are trying to do as a part of this. So uh, with this now I'll hand over uh, the session to Dr. Varun who will be talking more about the perceptions related to landslides by simulations. Yeah, thank you Uday. Uh, so <clears throat> just to uh, bring your perspective, uh, till now Professor Uday was talking about uh, susceptibility. Uh, we are going to change the currency and look at the people uh, who are affected by the slides and particularly uh, who live in this area, how they perceive this susceptibility uh, which is uh, or the probability of landslides occurring. Uh, so with this, uh, there are two aspects here. Uh, one is uh, use of surveys, uh, particularly uh, in the area uh, which present the susceptibility of an area uh, to, um, to common people and kind of and these people live in this area. And the idea is how knowledgeable they are uh, about, uh, you know, understanding the susceptibility. And uh, what do they think of the causes and uh, perception? Uh, the other aspect of it is uh, survey, of course, is a more static measure. Uh, so another option is we can present people with uh, simulation tools. Uh, simulation tools come in different forms. Uh, in our research, we have worked on tools uh, which are more like, uh, you know, where people living in the area, uh, you know, are uh, asked to play as a person who lives in that area. Uh, who has a house, uh, who has an income source uh, and landslides uh, can disrupt uh, the lives, uh, can affect, uh, you know, can cause deaths, can cause injuries, uh, can cause property damage, uh, so make, can diminish the wealth of the person. So the idea is how do people uh, put in money uh, for mitigating these uh, disasters um, or reducing the probability of these disasters from the human aspect or human contribution. Um, and uh, and the other aspect is uh, if we can educate people uh, using tools uh, about you know common things uh, with, and and these uh, this education can be set in very popular games like snakes and ladder uh, or some of these catchy things where you know school children love to play. So with this, uh, uh, without any delay, I'm going to just talk about a few research objectives. So first, of course, I'm going to talk about. Uh, gaps in literature, knowledge and awareness, uh, mostly survey based method. And the other aspect will be uh, presenting you a tool uh, where we look at how people make decisions and then look at if we can, um, yeah, anyhow, uh, if we can, uh, if we can, uh, you know, uh, vary uh, this, the, the, the static versus dynamic nature of the tool uh, and vary the amount of damage a slide can cause in the tool. Uh, and how people, uh, how people, uh, just, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, okay, something happened, yeah, yeah, are you able to still see the slide? Yes, yeah. sir, we are able to see. Yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. So, uh, now you should be able to see a pointer as well, yeah. So uh, here, uh, basically, we are looking at feedback strength and coming to it and also, you know, how people make decisions when this landslide problem is presented more dynamically uh, versus statically, uh, you know, in a simulation tool where you can simulate a slide versus statically just read about it. And uh, second, uh, when the slide probabilities are higher, uh, particularly say in the monsoon time, 
uh, compared to other times of the year. And then I'm going to present some work on snakes and ladder game where we are educating people and it has shown some promise. This is landslide snakes and ladder game. So here we have uh, the first objective and uh, what we did was we actually uh, did a survey in the Mandi district of Himachal Pradesh where we are located uh, and uh, we wanted to test people's land risk awareness and perception. Uh, and particularly uh, the susceptibility maps like hazard zonation maps uh, are prepared by experts. Uh, so we already have uh, zonation maps available of uh, the national highway running through Mandi and adjoining area. And the question is, uh, how do common people see and understand these maps? Uh, so we wanted to, of course, um, look at uh, different aspects. I'm not going to go into detail, but socio-demographic, socio-economic, knowledge awareness, uh, perception and perception of in general landslide risk management. Uh, mostly people were from Mandi town. We have 50 uh, households here and uh, this is the distribution of male and female data. Uh, typically middle, uh, you know, 35 years towards the younger population. Uh, so this is the, uh, the, the sum of the results we got. So we presented this uh, hazard zonation map and you can actually see this is Mandi town right there and adjoining area. And uh, this color on the map kind of shows the, you know, the susceptibility of the hazard or the probability you can think of uh, more like spatially presented. Uh, and this has been, uh, you know, over a period of uh, time, uh, which uh, when, you know, you estimate this. Uh, so redder regions or darker regions are more prone, severe susceptibility versus, uh, you know, bluer or greener regions have low susceptibility. So clearly there are regions like region D and uh, region maybe B here where there are dots where susceptibility of a slide is more. So we ask these people, uh, look at the map and what do you think is the most landslide susceptible area? And you can actually see <clears throat> uh, people are able to identify B and D, but there are some people who are also going for A and C. So what it shows is that there is some, uh, you know, it's not that such kind of maps are good for communicating risk. Uh, there may be, uh, you know, a distribution around uh, understanding of people. We've also asked for factors, you know, which may mostly influence lights. Uh, and here in the factor space, uh, we find that, of course, a uh, significant number of people do understand uh, that rainfall may be a factor, uh, but some interesting factors like an act of God uh, also show up and, uh, of course, in inappropriate land management. So what I wanted to show is that um, there are, uh, there are uh, some interesting results here uh, in terms of people believing that landslide is something which is not in their own control it's controlled by god uh, or some force which is outside their uh, own abilities and uh, some of course think that climate change may be a cause of landslides so i just wanted to show you and uh, we've also looked at perception of landslide risk in khalyar particularly this is the region and uh, majority of the people because they live in this area uh, almost 90 percent uh, of course 45% of them think it's a low probability event, although that area is landslide prone uh, and uh, moderately uh, to high uh, or unsure population. So moderate is about 50% of the people think it's moderate and none of them think it's high. Uh, of course, regionally and if you look at temporally during monsoon, this area gets a lot of uh, boulder falls and uh, slides. So I'm going to go to uh, second aspect, which is on interactive landslide simulator, where I'm going to show you some interesting work on simulation. So first, before we build any simulator, uh, we need to have a model uh, on uh, how the landslide can occur. Uh, so this actually is an example of one idea, uh, which is now, uh, of course, this is debatable, but it's an acceptable idea in many of the disasters. And typically the idea goes like this, that uh, there are two types of causal factors uh, for calculating probability of a slide. One could be what people do about the disaster in that specific area. Uh, so it's like a closed loop model, human in the loop, where the human person, user, uh, is part of the problem. And if suppose the person build, contributes money, plants trees, builds reinforcements, and does some uh, you know, landslide uh, mitigation, uh, there is going to be less chance that there will be a consequence of the slide. Of course, slide may still happen. Uh, the second aspect is, uh, you know, how do the landslide take place 
because of the spatial aspect of that particular area, the soil or the spatial aspect having a slide. And the second aspect is, uh, you know, the temporal aspect. Uh, there are certain times of the year when the monsoons, like now we are entering into the monsoons for 2023, uh, how those have an effect on the landslide. So basically there are two probabilities of landslide. One is the probability of landslide because of investment, where larger the investment, smaller is the probability. And the second is the in probability of slides uh, because of the spatial and the temporal aspect. And basically we treat these as independent in the model and we multiply the two probabilities to get the total environmental probability of a slide. And the question is, how does the total probability get, uh, get computed? Uh, so what is the total probability? Total probability is what I am doing for the slide as a human being and what the environment is doing to the slide because of the forces of nature the spoil, uh, the, the weather, the rain, uh, and it's a weighted sum and W is a free parameter, which we have varied. The, the idea is that if I increase the value of W, it gives more power to the person to be able to affect a slide uh, or affect the probability of a slide. Whereas if W has a smaller value, it gives you a fatalistic feeling. Oh, I'm putting a lot of funds and doing things, but slide still occurs. So W has this effect of act of God, we call it the weight parameter, but it brings the aspect of act of God. So, uh, so after we build this model, we created this simulation tool. It looks like a nice colorful tool. Uh, basically, the idea is people are asked to invest uh, for mitigating slides in this case. We have actually had uh, several other versions of the tool where decisions are divided into mitigation or adaptation. We are also interested in looking at people's adaptation behavior, like buying insurance, trying to reduce consequence, but not affecting the probability. And whereas in the case here, uh, it's most mitigation. So people make uh, decide how much they want to invest and they hit the invest button. So you can see that there are a number of parameters. People get some income, uh, which is uh, monthly. And then uh, we have kind of put some numbers based on the per capita values in this region. Uh, and then you are also shown the probability, the property wealth. So the person owns a property, which is approximately, and Himachal particularly, everyone has property. Land laws are so strong, people can't buy land from outside. Of course, uh, so, uh, so we have taken some assumptions and uh, you can also see the probabilities of the investment, probability of the environment and the weighted probability and even the weight. Uh, in this case, we have given control to the person to be able to affect the outcomes. And what you can see, you can see how the total probability, this uh, weighted sum is changing over time. You can also see how much money is available uh, for investment based on income of the person and how much of the property wealth or property is uh, there for the person. Now, what happens is that when people make decisions repeatedly, um, there may be certain cases when a slide occurs. And uh, there are three things which can happen when a slide occurs. Of course, uh, death can occur, uh, injury can occur, and property damage can occur. And uh, so as you can see, when injury or injury occurs, there is some reduction in the wealth, uh, income, uh, daily income or monthly income. Whereas uh, if death occurs, then def definitely there is more. Uh, and um, if property damage occurs, then there is decrease in the property wealth. And people are asked to play this game in such a manner that uh, they have to increase their total wealth or keep their total wealth as high as possible. Uh, so here we've looked at, uh, you know, this tool and we created uh, certain conditions in this tool. Uh, one was whether this tool is present or whether people are just presented this model and probabilities on a piece of paper and asked to, you know, decide how much they want to invest in mitigation. In the other hand, uh, these people have been given the tool. They're asked to play this tool for say 30 months or uh, 30 time periods um, and, and then asked to uh, respond to day-to-day uh, -day decisions. And another aspect of it was uh, that uh, we have varied the amount of feedback, which is uh, the, the actually when a landslide occurs, how damaging it is, uh, whether it causes uh, reduction, how much reduction in property wealth versus income and uh, injury, uh, it can injury wealth that income of the person is affected. And there are, you can see almost 10 time assumptions uh, for the more condition, it's almost 30% loss in property wealth and 90% uh, loss in, uh, you know, whereas uh, the less conditions are less catastrophic in terms of damages. And, and what we're looking at is people's investment ratio. So typically how much a person could invest 
uh, upon uh, like how much person is investing upon the total amount of investment a person could have made. Uh, so it's kind of how much, what was, what is the proportion of the ability of the person to make the investment. So these are some of the instructions we have given. We have told people you live in this area which is landslide prone, and this is the mechanics of the simulation too. Uh, so we had data from students. We had gone to DRDO. We collected some University of Rajasthan, some people. So we have in this uh, data set 83 people. Uh, they are mostly, uh, you know, uh, from STEM background, uh, young population. Um, experimental sessions were 30 minutes long and people were paid 50 INR to participate and there was a performance incentive. So among those who could keep their property, the total wealth as high as possible, uh, the top 10 were given uh, some, uh, you know, gift cards. So this was an incentive to incentivize people to play the game in a, in a best possible manner from their side. Uh, so these are the, some of the interesting results we got. Uh, so if you do not present, so y-axis is the investment ratio, average investment ratio, um, how much of the total wealth uh, they have are they investing. And x-axis is when there are no tool, uh, when it's just a paper and pencil, they are given just this model on a piece of paper and asked to respond. So you can actually see almost double uh, or 53% of their investment they're putting when the tool is present when feedback is present versus when there is no feedback. So definitely these simulation tools have an effect on increasing people's response to uh, disasters like slides. And actually we have seen this uh, in our real world, real life as well. When in rains, uh, damages occurs, suddenly we get emails and we get messages uh, from uh, our landslide monitoring technologies and all. Uh, saying that, hey, watch out for slide, and then we are risk averse. We probably don't want to travel that day or so. So when when it is actually given as a feedback to us, we do respond to it. So it kind of uh, agrees to the the real world observation. And the other thing is that uh, damage, of course, has an effect as well. So if you make the damages more pressing, investment also matches. So people say, okay, uh, we are going to get hurt. Uh, we are going to have a damage of our property, so increase more. And one other interesting thing is the interaction. So uh, one interesting thing is that when the tool is present, more damage is really, really uh, pressing. Uh, it causes large investments. Almost 70% of the income people are willing to put in. Whereas if you do not present this any feedback, whether you talk about in on a piece of paper, high probability, high susceptibility and low susceptibility it doesn't matter. So what it's telling you is that these tools have a place just writing reports, presenting susceptibility maps, maybe appealing to the scientists, but to the common people, uh, it doesn't cause any damage. One other interesting thing is uh, we've looked at, uh, you know, uh, if you simulate uh, the more damage condition, uh, what is the proportion of damages which are possible? So you can actually see more damaging condition was more damaging compared to less damaging. This is just simulation, you know, running Monte Carlo simulations, checking out what would be these numbers. However, if you look at, uh, you know, proportion of, so we found out that if a person put the almost all his money into landslide, uh, that kind of is an optimal solution uh, to a problem. And we are looking at, uh, you know, how many of those people are putting an investment all strategy and a very interesting kind of result shows up uh, that without uh, the tool, uh, it's about very low and similar, whereas with the tool high damage, uh, people's decision make, um, making becomes more optimal. Uh, they are taking more optimal actions because of feedback. So people are learning and that is what we want to educate people about. I want to talk about last objective where we have talked about some education, uh, risk education for landslides, particularly using uh, educational tools which are entertaining as well like snakes and ladder game. Uh, so this is a game where we have, uh, I'm just going to play a, a minute video if it plays, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. It's like snakes and ladder game. Or LSN is a Are you able to hear the sound? Uh, just want to check. Okay, uh, maybe not. Yes, Dr. Varun, we hear the sound. Oh, great.
Yeah, so basically, uh, it's a normal game, uh, but when you hit a ladder or a snake, you are put a question about a uh, slide. And uh, if you answer that question correctly, uh, you get to reap the benefit of the ladder and you get a vaccine uh, to not <clears throat> uh, get uh, bitten by the snake. So you don't come down. So, so sorry. So there is an incentive uh, on, um, uh, on answering the question correctly. Now, the question is, uh, how much uh, does this gameplay have an effect on people's correct responses over time? Uh, so we have actually, uh, you know, we had two con two conditions. One where there was no snakes and ladder game. We just did a survey, and almost like the response rate is close to thirty percent. So people just get passing marks to these questions, uh, which may be important for understanding about uh, landslides. However, when we make the people play one round, and remember, snakes and ladder is a non-deterministic game. Non-deterministic means that if you do not reach 100, it keeps going on and on and on. So if you make the people play one time where they are able to end the game, uh, this response rate increases to 49%. And if you make them play second time, it goes to 57, close to 60%. I'm not showing one interesting result. But we gave the same questions on a NI, uh, NI NDMA workshop with Professor Uday had organized to experts who had come here. And we got about 65% correct answers from experts to those questions. So you can see that common people are approaching almost expert response rate in almost two plays of this game. And so if we can educate people with this uh, small kind of interventions, it actually helps uh, build confidence that, yeah, we can also educate common people. So with this, I'm going to talk about one last theme, uh, which is something where we are. Um, so recently, we have started research into Indian knowledge systems, um, and uh, we found that there is very old text called Viksha Ayurveda, uh, which was written by Sahilotra in 400 BC. And of course, uh, Viksha Ayurveda as Ayurveda uh, it talks about health of plants, uh, but you can see that there is a connect between plants and slides. So typically, we found that where on a hill where there are a lot of greenery slide is not uh, something which happens because those plants keep the soil together. It acts like a natural reinforcement or RCCB. Uh, whereas in case of uh, places where there are less of plants, uh, it's more, you know, soil is not able to hold together and probably might slide. Uh, so what we found is that uh, there are classifications of soils like Anupam, Sadhara, and Jangalam. And we can also associate things like Vata, Pita, and Kapha. Uh, which is uh, related to Ayurvedic, of course, with the human, uh, but with also with the kind of uh, soil. So, for example, Vata soil may be dry, sandy soil. Uh, so now what we are doing is, what work Uday was presenting to you, where we have gone to some 60 plus locations around and collected geotechnical parameters. We, are, we, have, we have made a questionnaire on Riksha Ayurveda and we are sampling these locations again. And we will take experts uh, with us uh, to these locations. Let them fill this questionnaire. Uh, and here they are doing IKS based classification of the soil, of the susceptibility of the area to the slide. Now we bring this IKS framework into the machine learning aspect which Professor Uday was talking about. And can we improve predictions of soils? So this is an ongoing work. We've just started this. Uh, one of our students has started working on this. And we are planning to go out very soon, maybe tomorrow day after. Uh, so just to conclude, uh, maybe uh, like or okay. So just to conclude, we live in an area prone to landslide. Professor over there has already shown you. Uh, landslide is a day-to-day -day ritual for us. It happens uh, on a daily basis or whenever the monsoons are happening. Uh, recently, been getting a lot of rain uh, in Himachal for the last few days, and again, it's become very landslide prone. Uh, yeah, there are interesting, uh, we can get data from low cost technologies, which are IIT and our group has developed. Uh, we can also combine it with satellite data, uh, which can give us, uh, you know, zonal regional scale prediction. And also uh, the idea is that uh, in future, we would like to create the simulation tools, um, <clears throat> games like, you know, entertainment games, which school children can play, learn about uh, and get educated about the risk, about the causes, about the effects of slides. Uh, and it might help, uh, of course, both policymakers in general, general public uh, to get uh, aware about it. So with this, I'll thank uh, and uh, some of the publications and patents. I'm going to skip references, skip. Uh, thank you. Uh, and we'll take your comments and questions uh, maybe at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uda and Dr. Varun. 
as you have tried to incorporate the traditional knowledge with the technological advancement, which is really a great initiative. And also the game you showed us, which will help to understand easily, not only the uh, age group of smaller children's, but also for researchers or those working in the field of landslide, it will be very helpful. As Thank of you. now, I cannot see any question. So with this, we will move to our second speaker of the day, Dr. Sri Krishnan Siva Subramanian, who is an assistant professor at Center of Excellence in Disaster Mitigation and Management, IIT Rudki. He holds a master's in geosciences from Bharati Dasan University, India, and doctorate of engineering in field of engineering for environment, geotechnical engineering from Hokkaido University, Japan. His research specializes in understanding the mechanism of shallow landslide and debris flow initia initiation induced by rainfall and snowmelt. For this, he employs in situ monitoring, laboratory scale experiment, and slope catchment scale process based numerical modeling. In his doctorate research, he focused on modeling the frozen ground, cold region hydrology, snow accumulation, and melt processes to analyze the slope stability and triggering of debris flow. In his recent work, he focuses on understanding the hill slope hydrology of shallow landslide and debris flow to develop thresholds for early warning systems at slope scale and catchment scale. He has worked in the development of real-time landslide early warning system in Japan and is currently in process of employing the same in Indian Himalayas. With this, I welcome you, sir. Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shubham Badala, for your kind introduction. I thank NADM for this opportunity. And I also thank Dr. Uday and Dr. Varun to setting up the context on landslide early warning system, which I will be continuing. So let me share my screen. Hope my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. It is visible in slideshow mode. Thank you very much. So uh, in today's topic, uh, continuing to the talk of Dr. Uday and Dr. Varun, as they have focused on local scale landslide early warning system, rather I will be focusing on territorial landslide early warning systems with the motivation of understanding what is a territorial landslide early warning system uh, we can abbreviate it as TELEWS, especially in Indian context. So we have had catastrophic rainfall induced landslides in India. Uh, of those, the biggest of the casualties came during the 2013 North India floods, as well as the 2013 1 in 100 year precipitation events that caused flooding, shallow landslides, and debris flows in Kerala. Some of these pictures. Uh, you can see here, which we all remember now, even now. And in case of Kerala, the devastation was also extended to the transportation network because there were like a compounding events as well as sequential events taking uh, one after the other. In today's context, I'll be talking of the landslide early warning system for only two types of landslide, that is shallow landslides and debris flow. So, the context is set. We all know why we need a landslide early warning system in India. In the next slide, I will tell you what is a territorial scale landslide early warning system. And the reason why we need a territorial scale landslide early warning system is because whenever the extreme precipitation takes place uh, in mountainous catchment, it does not trigger just one landslide. Rather, it triggers thousands to uh, 10,000 number of landslides and which needs a territorial scale landslide early warning system, territorial in the sense it is a regional scale system. And we all know uh, the climate science models, they project robust increase in precipitation in the future, especially in the Himalayas as well as in the Western Ghats. In case of regional scale landslide early warning system, uh, that is the TELEWS or cost effective, uh, and also it is a non-structural mitigation measure. So here are some of the photographs taken during the 2018 uh, landslide trigger in Kerala. Let's come to the definition of the territorial scale landslide early warning system. Over the past two decades, in many countries across the globe, uh, the setting up and development of TELWS has taken place. So 
The early warning systems for rainfall induced landslide operating at a regional scale is known as territorial landslide early warning system. Whereas if the early warning system is instrumented on one or more particular hill slope, then that becomes a local scale landslide early warning system or a slope scale landslide early warning system. In case of territorial scale landslide early warning system, which is widely used to assess the probability of occurrence of multiple landslides over appropriately defined warning zones, typically through uh, prediction and monitoring of meteorological variables. Here, in case of rainfall induced landslide, we only consider one meteorological variable, that is the rainfall. The figure here shows the setup of a territorial scale landslide daily warning system, which is phenomenal to any kind of system. So first is setting the area because a landslide early warning system should uh, work over an area. And also not all landslide early warning system will work for all types of landslide. If we look at the warns classification of landslide because the landslide mechanisms are different, even in case the trigger is the same, the rainfall. So uh, landslide early warning system should be working for di different typical types of landslide. In our case, we already mentioned, I already mentioned now, it is working for shallow landslide as well as debris. Then the monitoring instruments for the meteorological variables, in this case, it is rainfall. Then comes the modeling. So uh, to set up a statistical model or a data-driven model, what Dr. Uday has mentioned in his presentation, we need to have a database of rainfall as well as a database of landslide to correlate the intensity duration thresholds. That is the warning level here so that we can proceed with the warning zones. Then the response is given uh, as and when the early warning is identified that the landslide is going to happen. If we look at the scientific rationale of uh, landslide early warning system at the territorial scale across the world, we could see there are two types of warning levels that is the uh, thresholds are used. One is the intensity and duration threshold, which is very simple. And it is a meteorological threshold of rainfall intensity versus duration. And these countries, which are listed one, two, three, four, five, and as well as in India, six, use the intensity duration threshold to set up the warning level. Whereas there are few countries which also use a complex threshold, which is much beyond the hydrological threshold. Uh, is my voice audible? Someone has said that I'm not able to hear. Uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are some countries which use the complex threshold, which moves beyond a hydrological threshold, and those could be of hydro meteorological threshold, which also use the meteorological variables as well as the ground conditions in terms of hydrology, such as soil moisture or soil water index parameters. One such example is Japan, where soil water index is used, which is a complex threshold. And in case of India, we have an uh, experimental landslide early warning system, which works in the territorial scale, which I'll be showing in the coming slides. So, where do we stand in terms of novelty and value addition in terms of territorial landslide early warning system? As we all know, we have seen in the previous slides that to set up the warning level, we need two database. One is the rainfall database and the other is the landslide database. Unfortunately, in many of the uh, developing countries, we do not have such rich database to establish the threshold, such as the ID threshold. In that case, we need to look for alternative methods where uh, using some computer-based numerical simulation, we could generate some synthetic landslides based on the meteorological condition and use the model to develop our own threshold. So in such case, we have developed a numerical model for shallow landslide. And this is the schematic of the shallow landslide, which was done in Japan for snowmelt induced landslides, especially. Then we also developed a numerical model, and these numerical models work in a catchment state for defining the intensity duration thresholds for debris flow, which I will also show for a case study in India as well. Then moving beyond the intensity duration threshold, uh, because as I already mentioned, not just the meteorological parameter will tell the terrain condition, so we should move beyond the uh, meteorological parameters and setting up a hydrometeorological threshold. One such example is the soil water index, which is commonly practiced in Japan. So this is the schematic of the soil water index. We don't need to go much into the details, but these are some 
like frontier areas in which the territorial scale landslide early warning systems are evolving into. And very recently in Japan, using these numerical modeling approaches, we have defined soil water index thresholds for every 5 kilometer by 5 kilometer area in Hokkaido. Before that, there were soil water index based early warning thresholds in Japan, but the critical lines means the warning levels or thresholds earlier do not consider the snow melt as part of the calculation system. But we have introduced the snow melt through our numerical models and we have defined uh, revised critical lines, which is you can see for every 5 kilometer by 5 kilometer. So now in India, uh, we are actually trying to establish this method, which is uh, successfully implemented in Japan uh, to some pilot studies in Uttarakhand, uh, in, in the state of Uttarakhand. So uh, this is a broad overview of the numerical model. It works on a catchment scale. You can see the difference in lithology and as well as the performance of the numerical model is here. For this particular study, the accuracy of the numerical model was 59%, which is not so good and also which is not so bad because this comes because of the uh, quality of the input data as well as the robustness of the model. But what we could see here is this model runs very fast. In case of a real-time early warning system, we use these models coupled with some hydrometeorological variables in a numerical simulation domain. It is possible for us to develop early warning thresholds, which we will see in the coming slides. And this model, as I said, is used for snowmelt induced landslide, though it is not very relevant to India. What we take from here is the component of the soil water index and the utilization of this numerical model to define the intensity duration thresholds for rainfall induced landslides. And this is the schematic of intensity duration thresholds. So in one axis, we have the rainfall intensity. In most cases, ideally at global level, the time scale of this rainfall intensity should be in millimeter per hour. And then the rainfall duration will also be in hourly time steps. So only when it is plotted in a log log curve, so this should also be in log and this should also be in log, you will get a straight line. If it is not, it will be a uh, power log function. So once we move beyond this rainfall threshold, which means the possibility of landslide occurrence is very prominent. If it is here, then the landslide occurrence is not prominent. So in this case, for each region, uh, it will be better to define intensity duration threshold so that we can give the early warning information to the community. But to do this, we should have a rich data set or a database of rainfall as well as occurrences of landslide. So the difference between this point and this point is this rainfall intensity and duration triggered a landslide, whereas these points did not trigger a landslide. When we have lack of such rich database, we should go with alternative approaches such as synthetic numerical models, means numerical models to develop synthetic landslides, not a synthetic numerical model, I'm sorry. And one such model is this model uh, developed by Professor Theo Van Ash of uh, Utrecht University in Netherlands. And also we have modified this numerical model to account for the uh, variable saturation and as well as unsaturated soil mechanics concepts. And using this numerical model, it is possible to establish the triggering intensity and duration thresholds, whereas all the numer all numerical models have their own limitation that should be kept in mind, but still it is useful. For a case study of uh, catastrophic debris flow occurred in 6 August 2020 in Petimudi in Kerala, which caused the lives of more than 80 people. So you could see here, uh, this is the pre debris flow uh, topography and this is the post debris flow topography. It is a runoff induced debris flow and uh, it has actually demolished four to five rows of settlements here. So to derive the intensity duration threshold of this debris flow, uh, we have used this numerical model to compute the uh, threshold levels. And this is the rainfall data set from the nearest observation site that is even though it is nearest, it is actually 17 kilometer away from the debris flow site. And if we look at the IMD's glossary of rainfall, and this is what it tells based on the daily rainfall intensity. And as we could see here, the monitored or measured rainfall, though many people have different opinions of the total amount of rainfall occurred here, 
but uh, this is a published data it is close to 600 millimeter per day so it is actually exceptionally heavy rainfall of to extremely heavy rainfall to exceptionally heavy rainfall it is within this uh, level of the imd closure and when we input this rainfall intensity in our numerical model uh, we also consider the geotechnical parameters of this uh, slope materials into our model we could see the triggering point of debris flow as when it is initiating so that we consider as the initiation of debris flow and up to which the intensity and duration is where and then we plot it in a intensity duration curve as i said before this is a power law function and once we put it in a log log format we could easily get a line so that we could demarcate between the uh, landslide occurrence zone and non occurrence zone in this study we found that the exceptionally uh, high rainfall intensity caused the debris flow and we have also proposed a different intensity duration curve for this study area and this is just a case study because it did, we did this study after the landslide occurrence like it was not done before so how could we make use of these kind of models uh, to address the data gap of rainfall as well as the landslide event in case of landslide early warning system at territorial scale in india we have one such early warning system which is still under experimental condition but it is under experimental condition for selected road corridors in Uttarakhand, and that is the ISROs, Indian Space Research Organization's experimental and state early warning system, uh, which is developed and maintained by National uh, Remote Sensing Center in Hyderabad. So uh, this early warning system actually uses the uh, intensity duration threshold, as you could see here. These are the data points. So, as I already mentioned, you should have we should have a rainfall database as well as we should have a landslide database. If we could see the number of the data set points here, uh, it is visible that the number of data set points are low because we may have a very good landslide inventory in Uttarakhand, but deciding for which intensity and duration the landslide had occurred is very tremendous job unless we have an exceptionally continuous monitoring of rainfall in hourly time scale. So that's why the points here are low, even though the system works well. And it, even if you click this website, and if you visit the uh, ISTO's website or Bowen app, you could see the landslide early warning system actually performing for the uh, current day also. But still, we do not have many, many observational points here. So our work as part of this ISTO's landslide early warning system is to improve the predictive capacity uh, based on our uh, expertise in numerical modeling and defining different thresholds for intensity and duration. So for this, uh, sorry, for this our study area we selected Uttarakhand, not just the selected road corridors, we have selected the entire Uttarakhand and this, this is the meteorological flowchart of the study. We actually consider actual geotechnical mechanisms though in a simplistic manner because we run our model in a catchment scale of uh, different uh, different a uh, different resolution of a digital elevation model as well as other data sets and for this we actually perform field investigation and also collect samples for geotechnical testing then uh, run our numerical models based on the uh, tested values and one such example here uh, is the case study of uh, 2013 North India floods, uh, that is the Kedarnath debris flows. In this catchment, if we see, there were 120 number of landslides mapped by the National Remote Sensing Center, by, <clears throat> by the team in National Remote Sensing Center. And this data set tells us there were 120, most of them were debris flows. So in this case, we have modeled uh this debris flows using our numerical model and also we have used the uh wharf numerical model with the help of uh, our faculty expertise in our center uh and we have got the intensity duration curve through running this numerical model and this is just a start because uh the model what we use has lots and lots of limitations but 
if we run this model for many different case studies or different number of landslide occurred during 2013, as well as we have to extend it to other study areas in India, we could solve the problem of database, the landslide database scarcity, as well as the intensity uh, we could get from the BOSC numerical model in an hourly time scale. Then we'll be able to define uh, further refined intensity duration thresholds in the territorial scale landslide area warning system. So, in this research, what we are trying to do is we are trying to increase the number of points here to uh, address the gap through synthetic landslides from the numerical model, which we believe it will improve the efficiency of the system. As well as, in addition, we also try to implement the soil water index parameter, which is successfully implemented in Japan, into this ISTOS existing system. So, in summary, our aim is to develop a landslide early warning system. Uh, please pay attention to the type for only shallow landslides and debris flow. This doesn't occur for different types of landslides, such as uh, rock failures or rock slope cuts, or the landslide induced by road expansion and all, because those are also common. So combining the usage of catchment or basin scale physically based models, we directly try to define early warning thresholds for shallow landslides and debris flow through generating synthetic landslide events under different scenarios. So we hope it is possible to derive early warning thresholds for data scarce region. And we tested it through case studies, one in the Petimudi uh, debris flow site in Kerala, as well as the Kedarnath catchment in Uttarakhand. So we expect uh, this system to be used for other study areas as well. So uh, I think I like finished very quickly, but fine. So I end up, I thank NADM for this opportunity, but I end uh, this talk with, a, with an article which was published in October 8, 2022. Uh, India needs an urgent early warning system for landslide, but challenges are there. But current early warning systems are developed in India in uh, different capacities, as you could see from the presentation by Dr. Uday earlier. And IIT Mandi is also working on a local scale landslide early warning system. In IIT Ruti, we are trying to work it on a territorial scale landslide early warning system for Uttarakhand. But a holistic approach is still yet to be made so that these systems will become in real time and will be used for the entire nation wherever landslide uh, disaster is a problem. But uh, this article it also tells that it. It is not possible for the landslide daily warning system to be operational not before 2025, but still two years is short time. And we'll be very happy if this uh, experimental landslide daily warning system becomes into operation soon. Uh, so thank you all for patience listening and thank you for opportunity. Over to you, Shubham. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Your knowledge of territorial landslide early warning system in India have enlightened us with a new technology and we hope that it gets success before the 2025 and it helps uh, the disaster management authorities in India to predict landslide beforehand. Thank you very much, sir. So now we have one more speaker with us. Dr. Harjit Kaur, who is currently working as a technical officer at Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Prevention in CDC India. Prior to this, she has been working with NIDM as a junior consultant. She has working experience of working for landslide risk management in Gangtok, Sikkim. She has published over 16 research publications in reputed international journals and attended many conferences. She is recipient of number of awards, fellowships, and professional free organizations such as Young Scientist Award, Gold Medalist in UG and PG Studies, Inspire Fellowship, and many more. With this, I welcome Dr. Harjit Kaur for taking today's session on risk mitigation strategies for landslide. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Subham sir, for uh, giving my brew introduction among the participant. I hope I'm audible to all. Uh, yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay. So just give me a minute so that I can share my PPT. I hope my PPT is uh, visible. 
Yes, ma'am. It's visible in slide show mode. Okay. So, thank you very much, uh, uh, GMRD team and uh, Professor Suri Prakash, head GMRD, for uh, giving me opportunity to present uh, in the webinar. So. Uh, you can see that uh, my presentation topic is on landslide risk reduction and resilience. So for reducing the risk from landslide hazard and uh, making our country resilient through preparedness, uh, through prevention, preparedness and early warning system uh, to uh, reduce the uh, hu both human and economic losses. So basically here we are going to learn how our country is, uh, how our country uh, is moving towards making our country resilient. So I would request participant to don't send any emoji because it's uh, making a disturbance while uh, delivering the presentation. So uh, I hope our participants are uh, able to understand the uh, landslides hazard and their uh, causing factor is, and uh, what are the profile of landslide hazard in our country. So uh, as uh, moving toward the disaster uh, risk reduction and resilience, we all know that we have a global uh, targets global goals to make the nation resilient. So how we can achieve this resilience by these goal? So first target is to reduce the mortality half by the uh, 2030 and reduces. Similarly, the second target is to reduce uh, the economic losses uh, by the uh, 2030. And uh, the main important thing, the target three of all these global target and priorities is to uh, all the nations should come up with the uh, national plan for the uh, risk reduction and resilience by 2020 and how our country is contributing to this uh, global targets we will discuss later so this is the main objective uh, even uh, the rio 20 plus and uh, the sdgs uh, sustainable development goal sfdrr all these global targets are aiming towards making the nation resilience and uh, by the 2030 i think uh, our uh, nations are able to uh, have uh, something uh, implementation uh, uh, project or the research R&D by which we can make, uh, by which we are able to reduce the uh, both human and economic losses uh, by all the hazard, not only specific to the landslide hazard. Here we are considering all uh, hazard approach. So uh, moving to to landslide hazard. So you can see this is the landslide hazard zone map of our country from uh, where you can see uh, the GSI Geological Survey of India prepared the landslide hazard zone map. So here uh, you can get an idea how they have uh, divided our country through the landslide hazard zonation. So here you can see the very high hazard uh, landslide hazard zone is uh, represented by the uh, pink color and then high hazard and the cyan and green color which is in the southern part of our country it fall under the moderate and moderately high hazard and this low upper the northern Himalayas these falls under the low hazard so basically uh, our country India has a uh, highest range of uh, mountain we know that we have Himalayas and uh, which is uh, formed due to the uh, movement of the Euro Indian and Eurasian uh, collision of the Eurasian and Indian plates and how uh, by uh, the movement of the Indian plates towards the uh, northward movement uh, like this say you can see uh, towards the China side it uh, make our uh, this rock 
uh, it creates the stress in the rock and make it fragile and vulnerable to landslide and earthquake hazard. So this is the basic reason why are these zone Himalayas zone and the uh, north eastern uh, like uh, north eastern parts this areas these are vulnerable uh, due to landslide hazard and the different thing uh, we have characterized with the lateritic uh, uh, cap where we have identified uh, some landslides in these areas in the western ghat in basically in the nilgiri regions so these part are vulnerable due to landslide hazards so what are the uh, challenges uh, for uh, landslide uh, uh, you can say for risk reduction in our country so basically we need a technical and scientific uh, uh, partners r and d research and development and we should integrate the landslide concern in the uh, development of disaster management plans and uh, you can say at different level at national state and district uh, even in the regional local level also then uh, we have financial issues like the uh, disbursement of the funds for uh, serving different areas of landslide means those areas are vulnerable due to landslide that i've already discussed in the previous slide then obviously we have some uh, legal issues that we need some techno legal regime for the introduction of uh, slope stability how we can plan uh, uh, regulate the urbanization I think my PPT is not visible. Uh, Subham sir? Yes, ma'am. Can you please okay. share it again? Yeah, just give me a minute. Somebody is knocking my door. Just give me a minute, sir. I'm just coming. Sure, ma'am. Sure. Till the time ma'am comes back, I request all the participants to please ask their doubt in the chat section. So we will take them after the talk is over and we will clarify your doubts. Sorry for the inconvenience, sir. So I'm going to share my PPT. Yeah. So here uh, I'm discussing about the challenges of uh, landslide risk reduction um, resilience, or we can say the landslide management uh, part in our country. So these are the three main issues from where these are the challenges. And I think we should come up with these uh, if we are able to increase our scientific and technical part uh, with the financial issue. And also we can implement our uh, uh, these plan and policies at the uh, national different levels like uh, I have told that from national to local level. So obviously we are able to reduce the casualty from the landslide hazards. So uh, intervention for landslide uh, risk reduction and resilience in our country. You can see uh, first in 1998, as uh, we have the history after the uh, Malpa tragedy in uh, Uttarakhand area, uh, we have uh, developed uh, the DST, Department of Science and Technology, developed a three task force for the uh, landslide hazard donation so uh, with the uh, collaboration of the geological survey of india and then we have the task force on the geotechnical investigation uh, which is uh, headed by the dst and we have the uh, task force on land use regulation and planning coordination by the ministry of environment forest and climate change so these are, are all about uh, previous from the uh, 2000 then as I have told that uh, after the Hugo framework, where we have to reduce the reduction. So at that time, we have uh, come up with the national guideline on the management of landslide and snow avalanches, which were developed by the National Disaster uh, Management Authority 
of our country so uh, then uh, in sfdrr sdgs like uh, i have already mentioned in my first slide that uh, by 2020 we have to come up with the national uh, plans uh, with the all the disasters so obviously with the implementation of uh, the global targets our uh, country and uh, ndma as the lead they are come up with the national landslide risk management strategy in 2019 and the uh, are the main uh, steps we can see to uh, to make our country resilient uh, towards uh, the landslide hazard so basically in the uh, landslide uh, national landslide uh, strategy will uh, the main uh, agenda or the vision of this strategy is to need to strengthen and mainstreaming the uh, landslide disaster preparedness like this training program is also the part of the uh, preparedness and mitigation strategy response uh, we should come up uh with some uh, has our mission mapping uh, risk mapping specially and uh, we should come up with some early warning system and awareness generation uh, and uh, capacity building so these and uh, we have should come up with the policies and mitigation of the uh, problematic uh, uh, landslide areas in our country so this is the main vision of this strategy so the major component of this uh, landslide risk management strategy is first is the first component is the landslide hazard mapping so uh, like my previous speaker also talk about that uh, how they are doing the iit mandi and other also uh, higher institution in our country iit roorkee iit kanpur iit kharagpur and these are and vit university also so the, these are also i think some participant is asking to uh, speak in hindi uh, subham sir are you there uh, yes ma'am i mean ha to kya english chalegi ki mujhe dono language mein bolna hai ma'am the language in which you are comfortable hindi english mix or okay no i don't have any issue because i have seen one message from the participant uh, they are requesting to speak in hindi uh, yes ma'am then please hmm. if you मैं थोड़ा मिक्स करके चलो बोलती हूँ या तो हमारी जो लैंडस्लाइड रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटजी जो एनडीएमए ने बनाई है उसमें हमारा जो मेन कंपोनेंट है दैट इज दी लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड मैपिंग सो हेयर वी हैव टू लाइक मिसो स्केल मैपिंग्स आर गोइंग ऑन and uh, the main nodal agency for landslide hazard mapping in our country is geological survey of india to uh, isme uh, hamare jo uh, first jo humne ek map dekha tha uh, second slide mein maine aapko landslide hazard uh, zonation map dikhaya tha to us hisab se uh, hame uh, uske liye jo vulnerable sites hain wahan pe mesu scale uh, पे लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड मैपिंग करनी है एंड ऑलरेडी दीज आर कंप्लीटेड देन वी हैव द कंपोनेंट कॉल्ड मॉनिटरिंग एंड अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम एज वी नो दैट द जीएसआई जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया इज द नोडल एजेंसी फॉर मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड एंड इन 2019 वी हैव कोलैबोरेशन जीएसआई हैज कोलैबोरेशन विद Uh, british geological survey of india uh, for the uh, that project is known as the landslip this under this project uh, basically the two district is covered uh, uh, one in the west bengal in uh, darjeeling area and the second one is the nilgiri district of uh, so here uh, basically they are come up with the uh, regional um, early warning system सो so, जैसे कि मेरे प्रीवियस स्पीकर भी बोल रहे थे कि वी शुड कम अप विद दीज लैंडस्लाइड रिलेटेड रीजनल लेवल अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम सो हेयर दे हैव कवर्ड दू डिस्ट्रिक्ट दीज आर मोर वेबल डू टू लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड 
एंड फीचर्स आर आल्सो डिफरेंट अगर हम अपने लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड के पॉजिटिव फैक्टर्स देखते हैं मोस्टली इन आर कंट्री लैंडस्लाइड आर इंड्यूस्ड बाय द रेनफॉल देन तो इसके लिए हमें जो अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम है दैट शुड बी फॉर रेनफॉल इन ड्यूस्ड अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम हमें अपने साइट स्पेसिफिक एनालिसिस uh, के तहत ही हमें चाहिए कि हमें क्या सेंसर बैठाना है किस टाइप की हमें वहां पे अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम चाहिए फॉर लैंडस्लाइड हैज आर्ट देन नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट इज द अवेयरनेस एंड जनरेशन मोस्टली अवेयरनेस और जनरेशन हमें कम्युनिटी लेवल तक पहुंचानी है इसके लिए लाइक uh, like, uh, एन आई डी एम इज द नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट एंड वी आर लाइक स्प्रेडिंग द अवेयरनेस अमंग द स्टेक होल्डर्स थ्रू रिसर्चर एंड ग्रुप ए लेवल ऑफिसर्स सो दफिसर्स फ्रॉम द स्टेट तो हमें ये है कि हमें ये चेन को बरकरार रखना है अगर हम एस डी एम ए स्टेट तक ये चीजें पहुंचा रहे तो स्टेट को डिस्ट्रिक्ट तक पहुंचानी और वेबिनार में तो हमें थ्रू आउट कंट्री कोई भी ज्वाइन कर सकता है सो इट्स वेरी गुड मीडियम टू अवेयर द जनरेशन अबाउट द लैंडस्लाइड हैज आर्ट सो इट्स अ गुड इनिशिएटिव आप कहीं पे भी हो अगर आप पहाड़ों पे भी हो या रूरल एरिया में भी हो यू आर एबल टू ज्वाइन दिस डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ वेबिनार ऑफ एन आई डी एम देन obviously the capacity building and training purpose nidm is a national institute for capacity building and training so here hamare uh, 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 in nidm specifically yahan pe landslide uh, hill area development center hai jiske tahat uh, ye log uh, jo hai landslide ke upar mein earthquake ke upar mein bahut sare trainings karate hain in the specifically in hill areas of our country तो वहां से भी हम अपनी जो कैपेसिटी को बिल्ड करते हैं फिर द नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट इज द माउंटेन जोनेशन रेगुलेशन एंड पॉलिसीज हमें ऑब्वियसली जो एन है गाइडलाइन प्लान पॉलिसीज के लिए है तो उन्होंने जो ये स्ट्रेटजी भी बनाई है विद द कोलैबोरेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर लाइक फ्रॉम here you can uh, see like there are some uh, nowadays uh, some natural based solutions are also coming up to yahan pe aap logon ne kuch uh, so hum uh, natural ki jab baat karte hain natural based solution ki to yahan pe bamboo plantation ka bhi bahut sara prayog kiya ja raha hai uh, vulnerable slope ke upar और वेटिवर ग्रास का अभी बहुत आप लोगों ने सुना होगा कि प्रयोग किया जा रहा है जो हमारी वलरेबल स्लोप हैं तो मोस्टली इस तरीके की जो नेचुरल बेस सॉल्यूशन हैं वी शुड प्रमोट इट और गैबियंस वॉल वगैरह तो बनाई जाती हैं जो पहाड़ में लोग रहते हैं उन्हें तो आ, मैं ये नहीं कहती कि दे हैव द साइंटिफिक नॉलेज लेकिन अपने अपियरेंस अपने आ, आंखों से वो खुद समझ सकते जब वो वहां रहते तो उन्हें ये पता चलता है कि हाँ यहाँ पे एक ये जो वॉल बनी है ये हमें लैंडस्लाइड से बचाने के लिए है है ना तो हम बहुत सारी चीजें जो हमारी सरकार करती है एटलीस्ट हमें ये पता चलता है और आजकल जो हमारे प्लेन लैंड से भी लोग हम जब माउंटेन एरिया में घूमने जाते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली हमें थोड़ा सा अपने व्यूज जो हमने पढ़ा होता है किताबों में हमें उसे भी इम्प्लीमेंट करने की जरूरत होती है और देखना भी चाहिए कि हाँ कैसे अगर हम पहाड़ों में जाते हैं तो हमें वहाँ कुछ भी खा के नीचे नहीं फेंकना चाहिए क्योंकि उससे जो होती है ड्रेन ज हो जाती है इट अल्टीमेट क्रिएट क्या होता है कि ड्रेन ब्लॉकेज होने से जो पानी नहीं नीचे जा सकता है तो वो फिर जो सॉइल स्टेबिलिटी लूज करती है और उससे भी लैंडस्लिप होने का वहां चांसेस रहते हैं तो हमें इन छोटी छोटी चीजों के बारे में ध्यान देना चाहिए सो दिस इज द बेसिक सिक्स कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ दिस एल आर एम स्ट्रेटेजीज जिसके अगर हम इसे इम्प्लीमेंट uh, कर रहे हैं अपने थ्रू आउट द कंट्री हम इसके तहत बिकम अ रिजिलियंट कंट्री फॉर द लैंडस्लाइड हैज आर्ट
and uh, recommendations for this strategy we will discuss uh, one by one. फर्स्ट uh, जैसे मैंने आपको कंपोनेंट बताया था कि हमें एक लैंडस्लाइड uh, हैजार्ड मैपिंग करनी है थ्रू आउट आर कंट्री तो हमें फर्स्ट तो एक यूजर फ्रेंडली लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड मैप चाहिए अब मानिए uh, मैंने पी मैंने रिसर्च किया हुआ है लैंडस्लाइड पे हमारे जो इसके पहले स्पीकर्स थे दे हैव गुड नॉलेज साइंटिफिक नॉलेज है ना उन्हें तो पता है वी कैन एनालाइज दी मैप जो साइंटिफिक कम्युनिटीज है बट जो हमें यूजर फ्रेंडली हम यहाँ वर्ड क्यों यूज कर रहे हैं ताकि जो कम्युनिटी है वहाँ की जो कम्युनिटी लेवल है वहाँ पे हमें टेन प्लस टू के भी लोग मिलते हैं जिनकी ज्यादा साक्षरता नहीं होती है तो हमें उनको किस तरीके से ये इस चीजों के बारे में बताना है अगर हमने एक मैप बनाया है और हम उसको एक आपने देखा है जीएसआई ने पांच भागों में डिवाइड किया हुआ है तो उसमें कलर कॉम्पोजिशन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट दिए कि रेड इज दाई हजार है ना अगर उन हम एक कम्युनिटी लेवल पे अगर हम लैंडस्लाइड हजार की एक ट्रेनिंग करेंगे तो हमें उनको गांव वालों को ये बताना पड़ेगा कि आपका जो ये एरिया है इट फॉल्स अंडर हाई वालिटी है ना तो अगर वो उस एरिया पे है तो आपको यहाँ पे घर नहीं बनाना है अगर आपका घर है तो कुछ आप जो अपने डिस्ट्रिक्ट अथॉरिटी या तालुका लेवल पे आप उन्हें इन्फॉर्म करें और जो इंस्ट्रक्टर जो हायर अथॉरिटी होगा वो उसके लिए अप्रोप्रिएट मेजर्स लेंगे जैसे रेट्रो ऑफ द बिल्डिंग्स आ जाता है बहुत सारी ऐसी चीजें हैं तो हमें इसीलिए हमने ये वर्ड यूज किया कि हमें यूजर फ्रेंडली हजार्ड लैंडस्लाइड हजार्ड मैप बनाना है और हमें एक जैसे कि आप ये देख सकते हो मैंने थर्ड पॉइंट पे यहाँ पे मेंशन किया है कि द नेशनल लैंडस्लाइड ससेप्टिबिलिटी मैपिंग मैप नीड टू बी मेड अवेलेबल इन मोबाइल फोन थ्रू एप बेस्ड प्लेटफॉर्म जैसे कि हम एक मैं एग्जाम्पल देती हूँ हमारे पास तमिलनाडु स्टेट है तो तमिलनाडु स्टेट की वलनरेबिलिटी डिफरेंट है है ना वहां पे फ्लड है ड्रॉट की प्रॉब्लम है हीट वेव की प्रॉब्लम है तो उनके हजार डिफरेंट है तो इसलिए उनका जो उनकी स्टेट ने एक टीएन स्मार्ट पोल की एक ऐप बनाई है उसी प्रकार से हमें जब पता हो कि जैसे जो हमारे हिमालयन स्टेट हैं, दे आर मोर वेबल डू टू लैंडस्लाइड है ना तो इसके लिए भी हमें उन स्टेट को हम रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे कि वो भी एक यूजर फ्रेंडली एप बेस्ड प्लेटफॉर्म बनाए जिससे कि कोई भी इजीली अपने मोबाइल में उस ऐप को डाउनलोड कर सके और उन्हें पता चल सके है ना अब अगर हम साइंटिफिक और टेक्निकल की बात करें तो हमारे पास लार्ज स्केल पे जो हम मेजर स्केल कह देते हैं हमारे पास लैंडस्लाइड ससेप्टिबिलिटी जोनेशन के मैप है ऑलरेडी है तो अब लेकिन हमें अभी जो हमारे प्राइटाइज एरियाज हैं जैसे कि मैंने आपको बताया हमारे उस जोनेशन मैप के अकॉर्डिंग टू दार्जिलिंग एरिया हो गया हमारा सिक्किम एरिया हो गया नागालैंड है ना तो मिजोरम एरिया फिर हमारा नीलगिरी पार्ट हो गया तो हमें जो हमें लग रहा है कि यहाँ पे इन्वेंट्री लैंडस्लाइड का ऑपरेंसेज हाई है उस हिसाब से हमें उन प्रायोरिटाइज पहले तो एरिया को हमें प्रायोरिटाइज करना है फिर उसके बाद हमें वहां पे वन इज टू टेन थाउजेंड स्केल के लिए लैंडस्लाइड ससेप्टिबिलिटी मैपिंग करनी है और एक चीज है अगर हम फाइनेंस के बारे में बात करें तो Obviously, uh, इस generation, इस uh, uh, जो strategy हमारी है एल आर एम की उसमें हम ये रिकमेंड करते हैं कि वी शुड हैव सम प्रोविजन दैट कैन बी मेड इन मनरेगा जो हमारे uh, गाँव लेवल तक इम्प्लीमेंटेड है दिस uh, उसमें ये स्कीम होनी चाहिए वेयर टू वेयर वी कैन इम्प्लीमेंट दिस स्ट्रक्चरल मिटिगेशन फॉर दी लैंडस्लाइड पर्टिकुलरली इन दी हिल एरियाज है ना हमें बाकी एरियाज में क्योंकि ये जो स्कीम है मनरेगा वो तो थ्रू आउट कंट्री है लेकिन हमें सिर्फ हिल एरियाज और जहाँ जहाँ पे लाइक नीलगिरी वेस्टर्न घाट जहाँ पे हमारा सदरन पार्ट में भी लैंडस्लाइड के एज पर दी जोनेशन ऑफ जी एस आई हमें उस में हम वी शुड क्रिएट सम प्रोविजन सो दिस आर दी रिकमेंडेशन फॉर दी लैंडस्लाइड हैज आर्ट मैपिंग डेवलपमेंट ऑफ लैंडस्लाइड मॉनिटरिंग एंड ई आप 
देख सकते जो हमारे प्रीवियस स्पीकर थे फ्रॉम आई आई टी मंडी दे हैव ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट की वी नीड समल लेबल सिस्टम basically uh, as i have told that uh, mostly uh, in our country landslides are induced by the rainfall ye triggering factor hai kahin kahin pe hame landslide mile hain jo earthquake induced bhi hain hai na jaise sikkim mein earthquake hua tha to uske baad jo uh, earthquake ke baad bahut sare landslides hue the theek hai to wo alag karan hai lekin mostly agar agar hum apni analysis karne jaye hai na rainfall induced uh, landslide inventory ki bhi analysis hoti hai to mostly hamari country mein jo landslide ki occurrences hai wo rainfall ke dwara hai isliye hum ye recommendation karte hain ki we should come up with some rainfall threshold based landslide earning warning system and uh, obviously we need some uh, ground instrument based landslide earning warning system ab isme jaise bahut sari anomaly university ne ek sensor based bhi kiya lekin sensor based early warning system tabhi आप कह सकते हैं कि सफल है अगर हमें स्लोप स्टेबिलिटी पता हो और स्लोप के मूवमेंट जैसे लैंडस्लाइड का हम एग्जांपल लेते हैं ठीक है तो लैंडस्लाइड में क्या होता है कि जो स्लोप होती है वलरेबल होती है है ना हमें पता है और मोस्टली उसकी जो कॉमन लैंग्वेज में हम कह सकते हैं उसकी हिस्ट्री हम प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री देखें कि बार बार एक एरिया में लैंडस्लाइड हो रहा है तो वो क्यों हो रहा है है ना तो इसका मतलब ये कि वो स्लोप स्टेबल नहीं है तब हम ऐसी जगह पे हम कुछ सेंसर लगा सकते हैं ताकि वो उसको एनालाइज कर सके इसीलिए वैसे एरियाज के लिए हम ग्राउंड इंस्ट्रूमेंट बेस्ड लैंडस्लाइड अर्निंग वार्निंग सिस्टम के लिए भी रिकमेंडेशन देते हैं फॉर दी वनरेबल एरियाज एंड द थर्ड वन इज द आपको एक सिक्किम का एग्जाम्पल अभी बताया तो आगे हमें पता है की क्योंकि मोस्टली जो हिमालयन बेल्ट हमारा दैट इज फ्रजाइल ड्यू टू तो हमें पता है कि दिस जोन फॉल्ड अंडर दी असाइसमिक जोन फोर या फाइव में है तो यहाँ पे फिर ऑब्वियसली स्लोप स्टेबिलिटी की भी हम फोकस करेंगे वनरेबिलिटी को भी हम देखेंगे सो उन कुछ एरियाज पे भी हमें साइसमिक इंड्यूस लैंडस्लाइड अर्निंग वार्निंग सिस्टम की हमें जरूरत है हमारी कंट्री को सो दिस आर द रिकमेंडेशन फॉर दी डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दी लैंडस्लाइड मॉनिटरिंग एंड अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम फॉर आर कंट्री देन दर्ड कॉम्पोनेंट वे आई हैव मैं अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम तो सबसे पहले जरूरत है कि हमें इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ द लोकल मासेस बेसिकली जब भी हमें लॉस ऑफ लाइफ होता है तो मोस्टली यहाँ तो उस बंदे को होती है है ना अब अब जैसे हम मैं बोल रही हूँ कि लैंडस्लाइड इज इंड्यूस्ड बाय रेनफॉल है ना पर्टिकुलर आप उत्तराखंड एरिया में देख लो अभी थोड़ा गर्मी हुआ तो ऐसे बहुत सारे वनरेबल एरियाज हैं जहाँ लैंडस्लाइड्स होते हैं तो अगर हम कम्युनिटी लेवल तक अपने प्रोग्राम्स को पहुंचाए अवेयरनेस करें और अपनी जो साइंटिफिक डेटा है दे आर फॉर आर एंड डी पर्पज हमें जो साइंटिफिक नॉलेज अपने टेक्निकल नॉलेज है हमें अपने उसको आर एंड डी में यूज करना है और कम्युनिटी के लिए हमें उसे बहुत ही सरल भाषा में बनाना है जैसा कि जो हमारा कम्युनिकेशन हो शुड बी अंडरस्टूड बाई दी एवरी कम्युनिटी लाइक और हमारी कंट्री में बहुत सारी बहुत डिफरेंट डिफरेंट भाषा बोली जाती है तो लोकल लेवल पे हमें अगर सरकारी ऑब्वियसली हमारा मल्टी है तो हमारे इस प्लान में स्ट्रेटजी में भी है कि उस रीजनल लैंग्वेज में हमें आ, उसके उनके लिए मैप्स बनाने हैं और जो भी गाइडलाइंस प्लान होंगे वो उनके लिए होंगे और जब भी हम कम्युनिटी के लिए सोचते तो हमें बहुत शॉर्ट शॉर्ट इंटरेस्टिंग ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल एंड सम पैम्पलेट्स बनाने हैं ताकि उन्हें वो समझ आए और उन्हें क्या करना है और जब ऐसी आपदा होती है और कोई 
ग्रस्त हुआ है उस आपदा से तो उनको उससे कैसे ट्रीट करना है और कैसे रिस्पॉन्ड करना है सो so, ये चीजें उनका राइट right एक्शन बहुत जरूरी है इसके लिए हमें कम्युनिटी लेवल तक ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम अवेयरनेस करना बहुत जरूरी है देन द फर्स्ट पॉइंट लाइक आई हैव मेंशन दैट देर इज दिन वी नीड एनहेंसमेंट ऑफ एडुकेशन फोकसिंग अपॉन यूथ स्पेशली मैंने यहाँ यूथ को क्यों फोकस uh, किया है क्योंकि जो यूथ है दे कैन क्लेम वॉलेंट्रियरशिप लाइक हमारा आपदा मित्रा स्कीम भी है जिसके uh, तहत जो आपदा मित्रा स्कीम है दैट इज डेवलप्ड बाई द एन डी एम ए यहाँ पे जो हमारे यूथ uh, है वो उसमें कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट कर सकते हैं वॉलेंटियरिज्म कर सकते हैं uh, ताकि उनको डिस्ट्रिक्ट ट्रेन करती है आपदा मित्रा uh, को और वो फिर कम्युनिटी लेवल पे जाके अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम का पार्ट बनते हैं वो अपने विलेज तक अपने तालुका तक ग्राम तक पहुंच के वो वहाँ के लोगों को अपनी भाषा में समझाते हैं कि आपने क्या करना है और क्या नहीं करना है डूज एंड डोंट्स उनको बताने हर आपदा के लिए बहुत जरूरी है और यूथ ऑब्वियसली उनको पार्टिसिपेट करना है और दे हैव एनर्जी एंड obviously they are happy to uh, uh, collaborate with uh, the agencies and uh, contribute towards their community aur uh, hame agar uh, awareness ki baat ki jaye to hame school level pe jo hamara uh, obviously in, uh, we have school level uh, plan also to hame school pe bhi uh, bachcho ko ye apne jo different type ke hazard hain unke bare mein do's and don'ts पढ़ानी चाहिए उनको एक्सरसाइज करवानी चाहिए मॉक ड्रिल करवानी चाहिए कि हमें कैसे इन आपदाओं से बचना है देन वी शुड गिव अ प्रमोशन ऑफ लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड टेक्निक्स इसके लिए वी हैव गुड इंस्टीट्यूशंस, यूनिवर्सिटी वी हैव है ना आर एंड डी इंस्टीट्यूट आर देर तो हमें डी एस सी इज ऑल्सो डूइंग गुड पार्ट हमें ऐसे रिसर्च यंगस्टर को प्रमोट करना है ताकि वो इन हैजार्ड्स के जो मल्टी हैजार्ड अप्रोच हैं वो उसके तरफ बढ़े और अपनी स्टडी को आगे बढ़ाए रिसर्च लेके आए जैसे कि अभी आपने बहुत सारे आईआईटी मंडी से प्रोफेसर साहब ने बहुत अच्छा आपको बताया कि कैसे वो यूज कर रहे हैं लैंडस्लाइड मॉनिटरिंग के लिए और वो क्या काम कर रहे हैं अपॉर्चुनिटी है और यही चीजों को हमें बढ़ावा देना है बिकॉज वी नीड टेक्निकल एंड साइंटिफिक स्टाफ टू डेवलप दिटिगेशन स्ट्रेटजीज फॉर लैंडस्लाइड हैजार्ड देन फोर्थ कॉम्पोनेंट आई हैव मैं दैट फॉर दैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग ऑफ स्टेक होल्डर्स we have uh, different stakeholders and everybody have different expertise agar mujhe landslide ke bare mein pata hai to kisi ko earthquake ke bare mein pata hai somebody is civil engineer to sabki expertise alag hai lekin hum jab abhi jaise ye webinar hai यहाँ पे भी डिफरेंट डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर हैं जिनके पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं सबका बैकग्राउंड अलग है सबका एक्सपर्टाइज अलग है बट एक माध्यम है अभी द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव इज फॉर लैंडस्लाइड के बारे में हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं रिस्क मैनेजमेंट uh, की तो पहला जब हम ट्रेनिंग के लिए जाएंगे तो हमें तो पहले टीएनए करना है द ट्रेनिंग नीड असेसमेंट समझिए पहले कि हमारा पार्टिसिपेंट प्रोफाइल क्या है इफ आई एम गोइंग फॉर ट्रेनिंग एट स्टेट लेवल तो स्टेट लेवल पे हमारे पार्टिसिपेशन कैसे कि ग्रुप ए लेवल ऑफिसर्स हैं कि ग्रुप बी ऑफिसर्स हैं इफ वी आर गोइंग फॉर ट्रेनिंग फॉर द कम्युनिटी तो वहाँ पे पार्टिसिपेंट प्रोफाइल कैसा है वहाँ का लिटरेसी रेट कैसा है वहाँ की कम्युनिटी का उस हिसाब से हम अपने uh, जो मेटीरियल्स हैं उनको डेवलप करेंगे तो पहली चीज है जब भी हम आ, किसी ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के लिए आ, तरफ पढ़ेंगे कि हमें लगता है अब जैसे हम हिल एरिया की बात कर रहे हैं लैंडस्लाइड ऑब्वियसली हिल एरिया में है और हमारे सदरन पार्ट में और अभी कुछ उड़ीसा में भी केसेस मिले हैं हमें जो लैंडस्लाइड्स के कुछ केसेस मिले हैं बट दे हैव डिफरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फीचर्स ठीक है तो हमें उन चीजों को समझना है और उसी हिसाब से अपना आ, ट्रेनिंग को डेवलप करना है उसके मटेरियल को डेवलप करना है 
तो अभी हम लैंड साइड की बात कर रहे तो अगर मान लो मैं अपनी जो ट्रेनिंग है उत्तराखंड रीजन के लिए करूंगी तो वहां अगर मान लो मैं स्टेट के लिए कर रही हूँ तो सिर्फ स्टेट के जो भी ऑफिशियल्स होंगे पीआरआई से आ जाएंगे है ना वहाँ रीजनल जीएसआई ऑफिस से आ जाएंगे आ, कुछ यूनिवर्सिटी से आएंगे है ना मोस्टली जो डीएम होगा डीएम मतलब डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट डिविजन इन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड आर्ट साइंसेस जो होंगे इन बैकग्राउंड से आएंगे पार्टिसिपेंट तो हमें पता है कि दीज आर द ग्रुप ए ऑफिसर्स और इनको तो बेसिक्स इनको पता है तो हमें इनको क्या सिखाना है और वो क्या मैसेज अपने डिस्ट्रिक्ट तक देंगे है ना उसके बाद सो वी नीड टू एस एस दिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट वी कैन से फिर हमें इस ट्रेनिंग में अगर हम एक ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम प्लान कर रहे हैं तो वी नीड हेल्प ऑफ साइंटिफिक एक्सपर्ट क्योंकि हमें जैसे कि मैंने आपको चैलेंज भी ये बताया है हमारे इस रिसर्च में मोस्टली कि साइंटिफिक एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल ये हमारा सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है कैसे इसको इम्प्लीमेंट करना है तो ऑब्वियसली व्हेन वी आर गोइंग टू प्लान एनी ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स और वेबिनार तो हमें इसका मिक्सचर करना है हमें एक मैनेजमेंट वाला बंदा भी चाहिए तो हमें एक साइंटिफिक वाला बंदा भी चाहिए और हमें एक प्लान पॉलिसी वाला भी बंदा चाहिए जो हमारे उस पार्टिसिपेंट्स की क्वेरी को फुलफिल कर सके फिर वी शुड क्रिएट द कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एट ग्रास रूट लेवल जो कि मैं बार बार बोल रही हूँ कि द फर्स्ट मेन थिंग इफ वी आर एबल टू ट्रेन और क्रिएट जनरेट अवेयरनेस अमंग द कम्युनिटी देन वी आर सक्सेसफुल टू रिड्यूसिंग द लॉसेस और लॉसेस फ्रॉम ह्यूमन एंड इकोनॉमिक आल्सो अपग्रेडेशन एंड सिंप्लीफिकेशन ऑफ द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम अब uh, क्या है कि अब मुझे पता है कि जो हमारी पार्टिसिपेंट प्रोफाइल है वो डिफरेंट है हम यहाँ साइंटिफिक अगर होंगे तो हमारा जो भी मटेरियल वैसा ही डेवलप होगा ठीक है तो हमारा ये क्वेश्चन uh, होगा कि हमारी अगर uh, मैं आज ये जैसे प्रेजेंटेशन दे रही हूँ लेक्चर आपको दे रही हूँ अगर मेरा मैसेज uh, आप तक सही तरीके से ना पहुंच पाए so uh, there is no meaning to deliver lecture in front of you तो हमारी कोशिश होती है कि अपनी language को आप कितनी सरल और simple कर सके जो कि हमारे जो participant है वो हमारे concern को समझ सके at least they can grab the फिफ्टी परसेंट फ्रॉम आर लेक्चर देन ऑब्वियसली वी शुड रिमूव द कम्युनिकेशन गैप है ना अब जैसे एक पार्टिसिपेंट ने जस्ट मुझे मैसेज कर दिया कि मैम आप प्लीज हिंदी में बोले तो अच्छा रहेगा लेकिन अब हमारी कुछ पार्टिसिपेंट जो है दे आर फ्रॉम साउथ दे आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी है ना मोस्टली ऐसा होता है तो इसलिए मैंने ये डिसीजन लिया फ्रॉम कंसर्न कंसल्ट फ्रॉम दी होस्ट दैट कैन आई स्पीक एंड कैन आई गो विद बोथ दी लैंग्वेजेस है ना तो ये बहुत जरूरी है कि हमारे जो रीडिंग मटीरियल हो या हमारा लेक्चर डेलीब्रेशन हो इट शुड बी अंडरस्टेबल बाय दी पार्टिसिपेंट तो दीज आर दी रिकमेंडेशन फॉर दी कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग ऑफ दी स्टेक होल्डर सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट फ्रॉम माय प्रेजेंटेशन सो थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई होप आई एम एबल टू justify with you and you are able to understand how we how our country is going towards the uh, making our country resilience so thank you very much and over to you sir thank you very much ma'am for sharing your knowledge of risk reduction and resilience in the field of landslide disaster as of now i cannot see any question thank so, you sir in conclusion i would like to express my gratitude to all participants and the speakers dr uday dr varun dr shri krishnan and dr harjit for taking out their time from a very busy schedule and giving us this information uh, we have covered a significant ground today the delving into complexities of landslide hazard and exploring strategies to enhance resilience in the face of these natural disasters throughout our discussions we have gained a deeper understanding of 
multifaceted nature of landslide their cause and potential devastating impacts they can have on communities and ecosystem we have examined the importance of comprehensive risk assessment early warning system and effective land use planning in mitigating landslide risk moreover we have explored various strategies for building resilience both at individual and community levels like harjit ma'am said and dr varun showed us a very good game of snake and ladder which helps in uh, teaching about the landslide to a very at a school level so these kind of uh, programs or application based games for knowing the landslide disaster will be very helpful in communities and building capacities for communities we have examined the importance of comprehensive risk assessment and land use planning and by integrating these measures we have enhanced our ability to withstand and recover from landslide events while our journey to mitigate landslide risk and enhance resilience is going this webinar has served as a platform for knowledge exchange and inspiration i encourage all participants to take the insight gained today and apply them in their respective field of works and communities as together we can make significant stride in reducing the impact of landslide and protecting lives and livelihood once again i extend my heartfelt thanks to sri rajendra ratnu ias ed and idm and professor surya prakash head gmr division all speakers distinguished speakers for giving us their knowledge on the topic panelists and participants for their active participation and commitment to this important topic let us carry forward the momentum generated today and continue our efforts to create a safer and more resilient future for all thank you very much and jain thank you sir